Welcome to Quilt Moxie, a modern spin on classic quilting, the podcast where Quilt Moxie meets Craftsy. I'm your host, Ariana, and thank you for joining me here. Uh, you're going to find all the show notes and everything Quilt Moxie at www.quiltmoxie.com. I'd love to hear from you. You can leave your comments and feedback on the website, on iTunes, or send an email. Love to hear from you. Today's topics include hooked on knitting for the first time, craftsy, Celtic cables, a review, and we'll close our first podcast with the credits. In 2011, when I went to Germany and Spain with my mom for a once in a lifetime trip. And the knitting piece of it, how I got hooked on knitting, happened when we ended up going, uh, what, what was it, from Würzburg to Berlin to stay with uh, Uncle Klaus and Aunt Waltraud for one week. And Mom was born in Berlin uh, a long time ago. My German was nothing special. In fact, I could barely communicate at this time. So when we went to Berlin, um, I remember when Uncle Klaus and, uh, and uh, Waltraut uh, came to visit in Canada, Waltraut was constantly knitting socks, and she was knitting socks on DPN, DPNs, double-pointed needles, and I was fascinated. Um, I was so s surprised that she was uh, hooked on knitting as much as she was. So when we went to Berlin for our one-week stay, I asked uh, Waltraut in my broken English slash German if she would show me how to knit a pair of socks using DPNs, which she immediately agreed to. And now that I am a, a, a knitter, knitter, I know that I would do the same for anybody who asked me. So she proceeded to show me how to knit a pair of socks, my first ever pair of socks, which I thought were going to be my only pair of socks in my entire life, uh, which I brought. I brought them here. These are the actual socks that I knitted while I was in Berlin. Here they are. And I completed the edging with crochet. So this is what they look like. We, we love these socks. Um, so by the time uh, the week was over, uh, my, my German was a lot better. I could communicate in German. And Waltraut and I, we made a pact that we would have official sock day one week after we came back from our trip. So I would wear my pair of socks that I knitted in Berlin. And she would wear a pair of socks that she had knitted at the same time when I would return from Canada and we did that and it was just a fun way for me to bond with some of our relatives especially since I didn't really speak the language at the time and um, surprise surprise when we got back to Canada I found myself in a yarn shop you can only imagine what happened from then so this was 2011 I bought myself some more sock yarn and I started knitting socks as per the instructions I got from Aunt Waltraut, who got it from her friend Hedchen. And I just wanted to see, this, this is what I'm telling myself, I just wanted to see if I could recreate the socks that she had showed me. Well, for almost a year, I, I couldn't stop myself from making socks constantly knitting. I was knitting socks for my mom. I was knitting socks for anybody. I was um, just knitting all the time. And I knew, and how do you know when you have, when you are a knitter? Well, I knew that I was a knitter when I found myself knitting in the dark. And not only that, I was unraveling stuff that I had knitted just so that I could be knitting again. So I had finally caught the bug. 
like a lot of uh, beginning knitters and crocheters, we learned in school. I, I learned, um, I think it was grade one, learned how to crochet. I learned how to knit. Um, I preferred crocheting. I had made a couple of projects that I had given away. Um, but knitting, I never got, it, got into knitting. We had a project, we had to knit a toy horse in school. Well, I don't think my toy horse was ever completed. And I did knit a couple of sweaters and little little items for my kids when they were young, but nothing um, that would make me interested in knitting until our trip to Berlin. So uh, that's how I got started knitting, hooked on knitting. In 2011, shortly after we got back from, from this once-in-a-lifetime trip, one of my superhero quilters suggested that I open up a craftsy shop with my my patterns because I am a quilter and I have some patterns so I posted my patterns in the in the craftsy.com platform and craftsy.com I learned out uh, learned recently they have just a minute I'll look it up here craftsy.com is dedicated to providing the best education and resources for crafters crafters and uh, yes, I set up my shop and put my patterns up and started looking around Craftsy and getting interested. I tried a couple of their free classes and lo and behold, I've been spending a lot of time. I've signed up for a couple of Craftsy classes on knitting, etc. I'm now enrolled in more than 10 classes. So this podcast is going to be following my knitting, my newbie knitting progress through the Craftsy classes. And for the first podcast, I'm going to be focusing on Celtic Cables by Carol Feller. My first class online that I took by Carol Feller was called Short Rows, which is a free Craftsy class. And uh, Carol Feller goes through several ways of doing short rows in your knitting. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. And um, from there on, I, I signed up for a whole bunch of other classes, which I'm going to be talking about in subsequent uh, podcasts. But the one class that we're going to start here today from scratch is the Craftsy class. Celtic Cables by Carol Feller and I'm going to show you my progress through the Craftsy classes from beginning to end. So the first thing with the Celtic Cable classes, uh, Carol has 12 lessons and she focuses on uh, right in the beginning which all, some of the other classes that I've taken have have focused on which was measuring and gauge and all that kind of fun stuff that nobody really wants to do and um, one of the other reasons I really did not get into knitting was because uh, it's it's similar to when you're sewing a garment for yourself if the garment doesn't fit you properly you the, the garment could be wonderful it could be like perfectly sewn but you will not wear it and it will not look good on you. So I'm reluctant to do any knitting because knitting a sweater or a garment, if it doesn't fit perfectly, you're not going to wear it. So uh, that's why I really love quilting because it doesn't matter what size the quilt is, what you make it out of, once it's complete, somebody's going to love it. Even the quilt behind me here, is um, it could be a wall hanging which is the way I've presented it here it could be a baby quilt but either way it doesn't matter what size in fact I didn't even know what size it was going to end up what size it's going to be you're gonna love it and maybe that's why I prefer doing uh, socks because socks now now of course uh, I've, I've learned through the craftsy classes it's important to have socks that fit but you're still going to wear a pair of socks or a scarf. A scarf is, it doesn't matter what size it is that you make, the scarf is still going to look good no matter what size you make it. 
So once it comes to hats and sweaters and dresses, skirts, etc., those items I'm a little bit on red alert for because unless it fits perfectly and you like the way it looks on you and of course if you like the way you look in the first place it may not be a success in the end even though the garment was put together exactly as the pattern had stated. Alright so having said all of that it took me a long time before I had convinced myself that I was going to do Celtic cables because this is a cardigan and it's a fitted cardigan and there are a lot of cables and I'm not a cabler and in fact um, this is my first foray into doing cables. I did do a training sock to prepare for the, uh, the cable class which I guess I'll show you now. Um, the, the pattern I got from Ravelry, which is a free download by Tannis Fiber Arts, and it's called Business Casual. It has a one-by-one one cable, which I'm going to show to the camera now. So, And of course, I modified the pattern slightly, so it's not exactly like the pattern, but the cables are sort of like what the pattern suggested. So here is what the one by one cable looks like for my training for Celtic cables. I put a reinforced sole on it and a re reinforced tip. I knitted these top down and put in an afterthought heel and decided I was going to try reverse stockinette on part of the heel just to try something different. So this was my training for Celtic cables. I think what I'd like to sort of talk about now is my approach to how I approach these craftsy online classes so that I do get some success at the end. So far my success rate has been pretty good, pretty good. So my first step is I go, uh, I watch the entire craftsy class at my leisure just to see what it's all about. and and get a get an idea of what it's all about pretty much and then my next move is I go into mom's very very deep stash extreme wool collection uh, because after all mom had in her time wanted to open a wool shop she is a knitter and she has lots of wool in her house that nobody sees. So I've decided that all of my knitting activities are going to be using my mom's stash. Uh, so I go over to mom and let her know I'm doing a pattern for Craftsy and I need this type of yarn. So behind me, you're gonna see a huge bag. This is the bag that mom gave me for the Celtic cable class and she says, Oh, well, I have some wool, and she has a huge German accent, uh, some wool from uh, Ireland that my friend brought me back, and she would say, oh, a couple of years ago, but I know it's more than 20 years that her friend brought her four huge skeins. Let me just pull one out just so you can see. Four huge skeins. They're like this. As a present, and I, I thought that the Irish wool, given that this is Celtic cables, would be appropriate for this cardigan. She also gave me 14 balls of Aran wool and I'm going to show you the label. Here you go. When she got this wool, nobody knows. So here you go. Okay, so I had a choice. Those were the two and the other thing um, that I really like about the Craftsy classes is, is that um, it's very interactive. So I posted a question to, a class question to Carol Feller, which everybody has access to. And I, I weighed these huge skeins of Irish Aran wool and gave uh, Carol the, the sort of the how much it weighed and asked her if I would have enough for the cardigan. Well, I was very, very excited to hear back from Carol. The next day, 
where she reassured me, yes, I would have enough to knit the cardigan. So I was off to the races pretty much. Um, well, off to the races, uh, there was just one little, little thing that how would I get this big skein of yarn into a ball of wool that I could actually knit from? So uh, mom does not have a wool winder. I guess uh, she was doing everything the traditional way where you hung it over the back of a chair or your husband and you were just sort of winding your balls of wool. And um, well, I did something similar. I did a little MacGyver approach. There was a chair involved. I put the skein across the back of a chair and I drilled it. I had to drill to make myself some center pull balls because I did not have a ball winder. I'll show you what these balls look like. They're here in the back. So each one of those skeins would get you about three of these drilled balls of, of center pull uh, balls, I guess. I'll show you how I did it with a power drill. It takes a power drill, a thread cone, an empty thread cone for my serger, and a kitchen mixer attachment, and then you can drill yourself uh, your own sort of ball winder MacGyvered contraption. So I just wanted to give you an idea of what the drill MacGyvered drill uh, wool winder looks like. Here's my drill. Here's the cone the empty uh, thread cone for a serger and this is one of the attachments here that um, belongs to one of my kitchen mixers. So I just pop that in and I had it sort of snugged under so that it's on an angle just like the wool winder. Let me see if I can get this here to, to sit. And so I'm going to turn it on for a second. It's just hopefully it's not too loud. But you'll see here, when I put the wool on here, do I have any wool? Let's see if I can do this here. So you see how it turns? And that's how I created these balls of wool. So once I had my balls of wool, I followed, uh, I went, I decided then how was I going to approach the class and was there going to be something that I was going to be doing different from what the class had presented? And in this case, uh, with Carol Feller's class, I had decided in my head right away, uh, because I took the class on ferrile knitting, that I was going to steek this cardigan. That's my plan for this cardigan, that I'm going to steek, and therefore I will be knitting in the round. So when I was doing my gauge swatches, I knew that I was going to be knitting in the round and therefore I swatched in the round and now I have two wrist warmers. These are my swatches for uh, this project. It took me two, two, two tries at getting the right gauge. So I was kind of surprised that the gauge that I ended up with was using smaller needles in the end. I also, they're not identical. The, the second time around I tried her bind on method or cast on method for ribbing. So the other swatch, this swatch, has that ribbing or sort of cast on for ribbing technique included so I could at least try it out on my gauge swatch. Then the next thing I decided was I was going to begin by knitting the sleeves instead of knitting uh, the body of the cardigan because the sleeve only had one cable just sort of to ease my way into cabling and I also decided that I was going to knit the sleeves inside out and backwards. Uh, what I mean by that is that the final sleeve is reverse stockinette which would mean I would be purling a lot so I decided I was going to knit it by uh, knitting it and putting the cable on the back of, of the sleeves. And not only that, the, I also decided 
that I was going to do the sleeves two at a time on one circular needle and I was going to mirror the cable. So I have that here to show you where I'm at with the sleeves. I'm almost completed to uh, where the underarm section is where I'm going to stop. So this is what it looks like when I turn it to the right side. So you can see the cables and you should be able to see how they are mirrored instead of identical. And here are the needles. So you can see that I'm knitting them two at a time on one set of needles. And the way I'm knitting it, like I said, was reverse and inside out or backwards and inside out, however you want to say it. So basically what I'm doing is I'm knitting knit stitches and my cable is on the inside. So here you go. And uh, I just showed you a little uh, a bobble or a nap. That's the other thing that I made a decision that I was going to do different from the class. The, the bobble, I'm actually using a crochet hook to do it. I find uh, I'm getting good results with it and it seems to be uh, pretty easy to do. So um, I just wanted to give you another little bit of background on why I chose to to do my reverse stockinette in the form of a knit stitch. In other words, knit it backwards or inside out, I guess, inside out my sleeves. I had uh, already by this time knitted my mom a sweater and the entire sweater was all bobbles and reverse stockinette stitch. And right away, when I had decided to do that sweater, I decided right away that I was going to do that inside out as well. And I'm going to show you what, what pattern this is so you can see just by the model how old some of these knitting magazines are that mom is using. So this is the sweater that the model is wearing, which my mom, I'm glad to say, is actually wearing in public because we use the measurements from one of her favorite sweaters that actually fit her and I was able to tailor this sweater um, which is by Wendy Sharma and Sarto there's no date on this magazine or on this this pattern so she wears it and she loves it and she always wanted to make it so because she has all this wool I decided I was going to knit it for her because I can't stop knitting anyway so She's happy, I'm happy, and I'm using her yarn for now. But the other thing that Carol uh, focused on, which I really did appreciate, was taking proper measurements so that the cardigan will actually be designed for my, my size. So, well, I will see. I'm still hesitant, but I'm going to continue. Another thing that I really like when I'm knitting that I learned from another podcast, and there's so many podcasts out there that I, I really appreciate. I got so much information from the podcast, including what needles to buy, what books to read, etc., etc., uh, is an app called the Stitch Minder. Now, I've opened it up here on my son's iPod to show you what, what it sort of looks like. And basically... I'm not sure if I can do this without, uh, I, I can't see what the camera is doing here. But as soon as you get to the end of a row, you just put your finger on it and it'll increment or, or decrement, depending on what you've set up here, um, the numbers. So I find this very practical when I'm trying to keep track of what I'm knitting. Uh, it, it makes it really easy. I do... Uh, want to support the other podcasters. I really appreciate what they're doing. I wanted to talk about uh, a book review. Now in the background here I've got uh, Carol Feller's Contemporary Irish Knits book which I bought based uh, solely from a book review from the Knitmore Girls and I've linked the review for you uh, in the show notes 
and um, I haven't I haven't gone through the book yet I just purchased it my luck has been so good by just relying on what all the other podcasters have reviewed that I basically take their word for it and I have not been disappointed yet I hope you enjoyed our first podcast of where Quilt Moxie meets Craftsy.com and I'd like to invite you again next time where I will continue with Celtic Cables by Carol Feller and I will also reminisce about my adventures in Fair Isle by Mary Jane Mucklestone. Hope to see you again. Bye for now. <laughs>